admin staff are under increasing pressure. In this programme, we look at ways to improve their working lives. At Ocklinge Junior School in Eastbourne, there are four full-time admin staff to deal with over 800 pupils, 100 personnel, countless parents and a budget of nearly £2 million. The work is demanding, but help is on the way. Maybe you could help with um, the registers and, and how I could do a better job with them. If he could help on how to prioritise, the best way to prioritise tasks without saying no to people. Really to have a look at how I'm interrupted and how best I deal with that. I have actually thinned down a lot of the paperwork, but maybe there's something they can see that I could do to make the job easier. Time management and training consultant John Seaman has come to observe a day in the lives of the admin team. Morning, I'm John. His challenge is to help them better organise their time, develop their skills and improve their working environment. Do you know, I think one of, the, one of the first things I'd have to say, though, that phone is so loud, and immediately my adrenaline started to rise. Now, I know you can hear the phone, so one suggestion might be turn it down a little bit, because it's great. Oof. Bev Norvell spends the first hours of her day checking the registers. So I normally put a little note into the teacher just to say please ask for a letter. Yeah. So you do a little handwritten note every time? Yes. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether there's scope for a, like, a little generic type slip where you can cross things out or just put minimal details yeah. in. Yeah, and then all you've got to do is yeah. pick it up, write down, Joe, you know, no letter, thank you, slip it in. Yeah, excellent idea, yeah. And then they, they'll be able to read the writing as well. Not that I'm saying you've got bad writing. <laughs> But those little generic slips that can cover a number of things, yeah. you write yeah, it. we've already got those for other things, so There yeah. you go. So Good transfer idea. those, yeah. all that type. So that, again, that might be something you can work on. Hi. <laughs> Marion Egan is responsible for organising nearly 40 after-school clubs. There's a lot of paperwork. Is there any work that you're duplicating? So you've got, um, you've got a hard copy here. Could that be transferred straight onto your Excel spreadsheet, wherever it is used? Because at the moment, this is a comfort factor. Most people like hard copy because it's a comfort thing. Mm. But it's still duplicating work. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Bye. So what about your workspace then? It, it does get a bit of tabletop space, I like, yeah. really, because we've had an intercom put in, oh, okay. which is screwed into the worktop. It's, it's ludicrous in the middle of the desk there because, it, you know, papers are floating around it. So maybe you can. It might, it might be more to one side than the other. But um, if people are organising your workspace for you without consultation, then you need to stamp your feet a little bit. Well, he did sort of say to us, and he, he, the guy that put it in, did sort of insist it was probably the best place for both of us to access it. And there's no way you could have two, one at your end and one at Beverly's end. I never thought of that. You know, um, there's always they never another suggested, way. They never suggested two, I must admit. All right. So now, if that's a workable solution for a pair of you, then lovely. start saying this it would be would great be here. I could have it right here go. next to the computer. How much do they cost? The five of those handsets? Just a fiver. Mm. So, uh, it would yeah. have been easy. Yeah, that's true. That would be easier. I have to say, I'd like to see you be a little bit more um, demanding. You know, when you want changes made and to start insisting a little bit more and really organise your own workspace, you know, how you want it done as opposed to being dictated to a little bit more. So, the, for instance, there's this phone here. It's bugging me. I shall, you know, lose sleep over this. It's bang in the middle and a man told you where it was going to go, this is the best place for it, in that sort of sense. You know, they should consult with you more, you have more say. You need to stamp your feet, you see. <laughs> We're not stamping yeah, feet well, people we, in here. <laughs> I think the thing that we all probably would say time and time again here in this sort of environment that we work in is that we very rarely get to complete a conversation. Right. So when you speak about reviewing something, it's actually making ourselves stop. Yeah. and finding that time to sure. say, we are going to actually discuss this now and, and sort it out. And it's literally two minutes in a day 
where you can get together, the four of you, literally two minutes, say, yeah. and it's probably that quiet time after the morning rush, you know, the 10 o'clock time, is yeah, it? Uh, where, where there's that yeah. lull, and someone leads it, someone leads the, the little discussion, saying, OK, what's happening today that we know about? What are our priorities? Everybody OK? Who needs a bit of help today at something? Fine, off we go. There's a change. OK. Liz Parks has many roles. As well as being bursa, she's personnel, office and site manager and has responsibility for health and safety. So if I could wave a magic wand and give you one wish to make your area even better, more efficient, what would it be? Um, I think it would be communication around the school. But if I didn't have to get out of the chair and walk to the other side of the school to tell someone that their child is going to be picked up at three o'clock for a dentist appointment and save myself that ten minutes to do that. Yeah. And then often get to the class and you don't want to interrupt because something's happening that's quite crucial. So you can end up waste, wasting time for a very, very important reason. So you said every classroom has computers in it? Yes. So it's me thinking way offline here. You know, it's, I'm just thinking like a little email system. Is that it yeah. just notifies the teacher, tink, 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 and yeah. an appropriate point, maybe. I don't know. I don't yeah, know what the school's really doing. That's a good idea. This. Huge learning curve for, for us to implement yeah. I mean, it's quite like a big that. thing in the future, maybe. Yeah, 100 it, staff yeah. needing to know yeah. information. But that's a lot but, of walking um, that you can put like, out just yeah. by going bang, 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 and they hear the cue, they look at the screen, and there's a message from saying, so and so, you need to go, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Who knows? Save myself some shoe leather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. As school secretary, one of Pam Twiddell's main priorities is keeping track of the head's diary. But there's a problem. He keeps his own diary, so we would have to go and check with him. OK, so we're talking about a hard copy... Yes. ..type diary like this. But the problem is, at the moment, if he is out and he takes his diary with him mm. and, we, and somebody oh. rings in to make an appointment, we, we aren't able to do anything, which gener generates another phone call later on when he returns. Right. I think w what would be tremendous in such a large school is if the head teacher and you people could embrace an electronic calendar stroke diary for him that you have access to, that you can input or, or request meetings with, you can see where his uh, whereabouts are so that you're informed. I'll probably put that to him this afternoon and see if we can pressure him into that. But again, uh, electronic diaries, fantastic way of managing someone who's all over the place and people need to know where he is. What's happened? It's going to be fairly quiet. John's next appointment is with head teacher Mark Trott. I've got a challenge for you. And one yeah. of the biggest things I would like you to consider, yeah. with the guys at Time Management so on, is think about the utilisation of an electronic diary. I guess where you're coming from is how do they know what I'm doing every day? It starts day? with you. Yeah, yeah. So therefore they, they know where you are or where you should be, and it's just improving knowledge of where you are, access and so on. It's so, so easy. I can do it. self -taught. So I'm, I'm just being a dinosaur because I like the book yeah. and like the, That's the a comfort visual factor. thing. It's a comfort factor. Mm -hmm. And so that would take time to break away from that, perhaps. Right. But I think it would enable them to work more efficiently with regards to finding where you are and so on. They can input stuff for you right. by phone call. It literally takes seconds to put it in yeah. and to be able to relay the information. It really is that quick. Wife's birthday, all that can go in. Everything. <laughs> you name it. You can use it for your whole social life as well as your professional life too. Okay. Admin staff are under increasing pressure since taking on the 24 administrative tasks that teachers no longer have time for. Like all the typing, photocopying and collating that teachers always seem to need immediately. Some organisations that I've visited have work slips. And, and again, it's getting staff used to the fact that, OK, I know I'm going to need this done by Wednesday, fill in a form, and then you can work through it at an appropriate point, you know, bearing in mind any deadlines, as opposed to this, here it is, I need it done, I need it done now, please. Yeah. And that's when you might need to think about managing them yeah. and asking them to be a little bit more organised. Yeah. If you give us plenty of notice, this is like saying no. I can't it's, do it now. I, know, I can't do it now, but what I can do is. Yeah. And so, it, again, it's almost training them to say, you know, we, we're struggling to do it immediately. Really Two days' hard. notice, fantastic. Yeah. So it's OK to say no, so long as you yeah. say why, but give them another solution, and then people are usually happy. Mm. It's change again, isn't it? Yes. It it's change, it is. really. And it's a little it's, step, isn't it? It is. You know? But I, I think that journey, that story is important to, mm. to encapsulate saying no and to be comfortable with it. Yeah. But you need to practice. <laughs> At the end of a busy day, it's time to sit down and discuss what the team has gained from John's visit. Are there any 
items that particularly stand out in your mind that you might be able to implement or consider implementing in, in the fairly near future? I think yeah. we've got a really good idea with the um, little messages in the register. And as we've already got me messages um, ongoing, I shall be starting that hopefully tomorrow or Monday. Was, we spoke quite a bit, didn't we, about mm. um, how we could make it easier on ourselves mm. to get messages around the school. And, um, you know, I, I'd like to think we could be proactive with the software that we have and use the technology that we have in the school that we may not use to its best at the moment. So, Perhaps the headmaster, head teacher with regards to an electronic diary, yes. he's, he's been made aware of that. So if you think it's a great idea, yeah. it's something you can mention to him mm. again and again and again. And again. Yeah. <laughs> well, regarding the clubs, I might well think look into doing more on the computer mm. instead of all this handwriting and having lots of paperwork. You also did, already did something today, so... Oh, what a difference. Have you noticed my phone? I can just about hear it at times with the noise, but it's lovely. What a difference it's made. And then let me draw you back to the old intercom thing there. <laughs> <laughs> It's really important that because you are such important people is to make sure that you get things to work for the way that you can work the best because someone coming in and telling you this is how you do it, this is where it should be positioned, is not acceptable. You work really strongly as a team, I have to say that. Now and then there might be blips when someone doesn't know that something's going on mm. and I think then there will be value in considering a quick two minutes after that huge rush first thing in the morning where someone says, right, come on, let's quickly go through what's going to happen today, what might happen, are there any issues mm. that you can think of? And it really is two minutes. Let's go on to a little contentious thing about how good can you be at saying no to people? <laughs> Not very good at all. <laughs> we like, we like to be helpful and pleased. We do like to please, don't we? Yes, we do. So you all want to be loved and liked? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what? Good luck with that. <laughs> because it's not going to happen all the time. No. I do think there's a strong case for you to think about, OK, sometimes we have to say no. And, and I think we spoke earlier about if you're going to say no, explain why and give another solution or a number of solutions so that people mm. don't feel shortchanged. Mm. I think the last yes. thing that I've, that I've got in my head with regards to, to, to your working as a team, inevitably there are going to be times when one of you might be sick, they might break an ankle mm -hmm. or whatever, so other people will be able, should be able just to step in quite quickly. So that's a good element of continuous professional development is shadowing, sharing best practice. It, what happens is you do it and you do as well as the person sitting there and no one knows it's seamless. That's a nice word, it's seamless. It'll take time and commitment to implement many of John's suggestions. But we returned a week later to see what they'd achieved in the short term. Well, one of the good things was turning down the phones. I've certainly noticed a difference. I've managed to implement the um, letter to the ch teachers about um, absences. The one thing that I did straight away was to order a whiteboard which went into the office that hopefully will help us to stop racing around the school trying to find out whether the drama is still on or football has been cancelled. I think John was very, very helpful in giving us information on how to prioritise and how to get rid of sort of junk items. Have you said no yet? No. <laughs> I have. I have. I haven't said no at all. Um, I've probably said, well, just leave it there or I'll give it a go, come back later. I think wait is maybe um, a more useful word.